door to you. Make you day careful, no go damage your life. You've got one life to live. My original. You should know where to go. The SOL. Five persons remanded in custody for forgery, impersonation, and duplication of SON's receipts. As Africa's foremost standards body, Standards Organization of Nigeria celebrates 50 years of improving life through standards. We have an update on activities lined up by the agency in commemoration of its Golden Jubilee this week on the program. It's Standard and You, and thanks for joining us on this special edition of the program. If anyone Okonkwo is my name, please stay tuned. I'll be back shortly. Don't touch, don't touch. It's fake. Don't touch, don't touch. It's bad. Don't touch, don't touch. It hurts. Don't touch, don't touch. It destroys. Don't touch, don't touch. I'm here. I'm, I want to work. I want to protect our industry. I want to make sure people are employed. I want to make sure bandits don't have people taking over our country because the people don't have jobs. I want to make sure our schools are working because the government is collecting taxes and paying for schools and building roads and building railways. This is what I'm here for. Join us on Standard and You, your guide to product quality and safety. Five persons appeared before Justice Oweibo of the Federal High Court, Ikoi, for forgery, impersonation and duplication of SON's receipts. Four out of five defendants were in court. They were charged for conspiracy, forgery, impersonation of SON's officials, non-payment of service charge to the Standards Organization of Nigeria, and destruction of evidence of the crimes. Unfortunately, the first defendant was ill and on admission in the hospital, a development that stalled court proceedings. Case was adjourned to the 27th of September 2022 for arraignment of the defendants. The suspects were all remanded in police custody. This case is very interesting and peculiar to the organization because this is the first case of all the forgery cases we have been uh, taken to court that we have actually got the real people that are committing this crime. The element of forgery is received, which has to do with revenue of a government. Instead of the usual three years imprisonment, is 14 years because it has to do with the government document. That is the punishment for forgery. And for the offense of impersonation, it's three years imprisonment. And also for the offense of um, destruction of evidence. Because for the first time we got the exhibit, the stamp in itself, mm -hmm. whereby they went somewhere around motion to get the stamp, they fabricated SON stamp. That is where the issue of um, the exhibit comes in. And then um, they now destroyed the head logo, which contains the organization's seal. That is where the issue of destruction of stamp comes in within the church. And then all the five persons confessed to the crime, including the cyber cafe where they used to go and print it. So it's a syndicate. One person will go to the cyber cafe and edit a document, the SON receipt, and print it. One of them will append his signature on the receipt. The custodian of the stamp will now sign and stamp. Choose live and leave. Buy original. Be original. S O N. In case you've just joined us, you are watching Standard and You. Did you know that Africa's pride in the business of elaborating and promoting standards, the Standards Organization of Nigeria, is 50? Oh, yes. SON is 50 and we are rolling out the drums to celebrate five decades of quality life and consumer satisfaction and protection. I am sure you are already itching to know what we have lined up to celebrate our success story through the years. In the studio with me to unveil activities for the agency's Golden Jubilee celebration is engineer Richard Adewumi. He is Head of Marketing, Standard Organization of Nigeria. Engineer Dewumi, you are welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Okay, let me say a big congratulations to you, the DG management and staff of the agency. I would like you to take us through how we started our journey into standardization as a country. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think first I want to appreciate all that uh, people that make SON to be 
We want to thank uh, the Ministry of Industry and Trade then. We also want to thank our past chief executive up to the current chief executive. More importantly, we need to appreciate the Nigeria Standard Council, which is the apex body in charge of policy for the Standards Organization of Nigeria. As Standards Organization of Nigeria, as we are aware, we started in uh, 1970 from a department under the Federal Ministry of Industry and then a small office at Onyopan, where you have less than 10 staff working for the organization at that time. Wow. Uh, yes, and then the, the act uh, that was set us up, Act Number 56 of 1971, precisely, uh, well, though it was very restricting, or restricting us a lot, but over the time, the act has been amended. And so today, we are talking about organizations that have been empowered to do a lot to better the life of Nigeria and improve the quality of lives in Nigeria. And so we progressed. Uh, as you are aware, our first director then was Mr. Ogun, late Mr. I want you to just tell us how really it was, you know, starting that kind of, starting in a very small room. How were you able to move from that small apartment to what we have now? You know, interestingly, because we are still being supervised by uh, the Federal Ministry of Industry and Trade at that time, and so you have a lot of instruction coming, and then some few people together uh, doing the job. It's, it's exciting because majorly we concentrate on uh, standard writing, doing a lot of all the standard writing thing, and then you start progressing from there. And because when you do standard, you produce standard, it's important you also consider implementing the standard. Since we are the agency saddled with the responsibility of producing those standards and also ensure compliance to those standards. So you're progressing from there. With 10 staff, how were you able to manage the activities of producers, importers, and even consumers in the country. You know, when it's a ministry and you're looking at it, that every time you have to grow, you make a demand, especially the moment you become a parastata, government suddenly realize that you need more hands mm -hmm. to do the job they call, because this, uh, the act itself has increased the scope of activity. Now we go to the carry out port operation, go to factory for inspection, and you know, Nigeria is such a huge landmass. You have to visit practically all the states. And we are practically central at that time. So you have you a few people doing the job. We had no state offices at that time? No, no, no. There was no state office. The, the old place we also operate was in the Enugu, where we then have a, a laboratory. We continue to evolve and progress along that line. But in the 1990, we now have an act that also made us a parastatal. Uh, and our first chief executive then was Colonel Etukudo. Yeah, and that was a detail of his exiting from the Standards Organization of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. After him, we have another military person, Colonel Polit. Maybe I would say maybe that was good for us because they helped to promote Standards Organization of Nigeria. I mean, using the military connection then, and it actually helped us. And so after, uh, Colonel Polit was the last military, military man that served in standards organization of Nigeria. And then we come into the era of civilian. Our first uh, civilian uh, chief executive then was Professor Abalaka, uh, a man of letters, mm -hmm. full of character. And so we really enjoy him. So actually, at that time, we were already expanding, we, or were we still in Lagos? Now, then we are, we are already at the Federal Secretariat at Ikoyi then. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we are occupying the ninth floor, and then we have a laboratory at the ground floor there then. And so we, we're increasing, and the number of staff has grown. So we have more staff, and then we're already having some uh, state offices. We call them coordinating offices. We have, it's like a, they are regional offices at that time. And then after Professor Abalaka, we have uh, Professor Shambi, another professor, that comes in, and then after we enjoy his era also. What was also his achievements? Yes, everyone that have been the chief executive in SUN has contributed a lot to the growth of the organization. Every, I can recount a lot of things that each of them specifically 
achieved. They've done so well for the organization. And after Professor Shia Balaka, we have uh, Dr. Kaya, Kaya taking over from him, like I told you, as well as organization of intellectuals. Mm -hmm. And so we keep having intellectuals coming in. And interestingly, they are professional in their own field. Mm -hmm. Majorly, they are scientists. So they understand what it takes to have an organization like a standards organization of Nigeria. And so after Professor Shambe, we have uh, Dr. Akaya comes in. After Dr. Akaya, uh, we have... Uh, Dr. Joseph Odumodu. Odumodu. Yes. Remember now? Yeah. Dr. Odumodu came in and really did a lot for us also. Uh, he came with uh, the mindset of, uh, what do I call him now, private sector. Yeah. Uh, he was a very daring man also, doing a lot. It was in his era also that the Ogba lab came to be, which we're very grateful for. And so after his exit, also after serving his tenure, uh, we have uh, a barrister, Abuluma, coming in. Barrister Abuluma also brought in the legal language to a standard organization of Nigeria. A lot of things were done, even with our act, and this has improved our legal status as an organization. And uh, after Barrister Buluma came in our pharmacist, Malam Salim, who is the current chief executive right now. Let me ask you this. What does the SON really do? And how is the agency perceived by many? You know, it's interesting what I tell people. Anything you can see that you can appreciate, you can see SON behind it. The clothes you are wearing now, you will assume a lot of things. But there's a lot of standard works that have gone into it. You go to the market and you say you want the clothes that is size 57, size 47. Remember, you expect that once you buy that size 47, this is how it's going to be tight. This is what the neck is going to be look like. This is what you expect the hand to be. And all of that, they are all the work of standard. Because in that standard, it tells you what this size should be, what the neck should be, what the hand should be, how long it should be. And so if you're asking somebody from UK, buy me a cloth of size this, and when it comes, you just conclude that it will be your size because that is what you are used to. What exactly is the mandate of the SON? And what have we achieved in line with this mandate? This program will not be sufficient to tell you our achievement because uh, I know joined Standards Organization of Nigeria over 30 years ago. I know what things used to be, and I know what it is today. Uh, practically, you can talk to somebody who's talked about substandard product. Even sometimes when they criticize you, it's a sign that they know that SON exists. They will say, what is SON doing about it? So it, what has happened is that people in their subconsciousness, they already know there is a body responsible for regulating this product, ensuring that it's safe consumption, safe for wearing, and safe for use. And so that is what we are cut out to do. We say a mantra is improving life through standards. So looking at SON and its activities, would you say that you are making impact in the society? Yes, just like I said, we are making impact. Uh, I, I will start with local production. SON has involved a lot of scheme to ensure that we're just trying to be very proactive in all we do. For local manufacturers, we have inspectors all over the Federation for your information. We have offices in all the 36 states of the Federation, including the FCT. Lagos alone, we have uh, three offices. Why? We are trying to make sure that we're able to cover very important area at all time. And that's what we have done. Recently now, Kano, we have two offices in Kano. From an organization that's there with the director, just at the head of the organization, that now has about 21 directors. So that tells you what we have done. And all that we have done is to ensure our coverage is total. And doing that also, we have officers, competence and training officers that goes to all these companies because we already have standard that guide the activity. They do inspection. Uh, they, most of the time also, this inspection is always aimed at assisting them. I remember some years ago, we visited the cable company 
and uh, we observed that their production is not in line with the requirement of the standard. So because of our expertise, we are able to help them to attain that level. Today, that company is fully certified. Their product is in the market, and they are doing very well. So we are not just helping people. We are also supporting them technically. A lot of people think we go to a factory to just penalize them. No, that's not what we do. We go there to support, to add our technical experience to help you to do it well. And if there are areas we want to enforce, we also do that enforcement. What would you say about the impact of the activities of the SON on importers, manufacturers, and consumers? Well, um, we've done a lot. Uh, remember, we have the Mancap scheme. It's a mandatory conformity assessment scheme. And what does that do locally? It, what it does is that everyone manufacturing any product in Nigeria, mandatorily, you must be checked, you must be certified to the requirement of the applicable standard. So MANCAP is a voluntary scheme for local manufacturers. And then for those that are into importation, it's a proactive scheme, we call it some conformity assessment program. It's an offshore program. Because what we are done is that a lot of time people buy product and bring it into this country. And once you discover that product is bad, one, Nigeria money has been wasted. Mm -hmm. Wherever they have shipped that product from, they will not return their product. If it's a life and danger product, we are going to destroy that product. So our money has just been wasted. And so the sun cast came, it's such that those products are pre-inspected and tested overseas and certified okay before they are allowed into our country. And so the SUNCAP, the MANCAP scheme has helped us a lot in regulating product that comes into this country or produced locally. All right, time now to take a short break. Do not go anywhere. We will be back after this message and we will still be talking to engineer Richard Adeumi on the activities of the SON in the last 50 years. Choose life and leave. Buy original. Be original. SON. Welcome back. The program you're still watching is Standard and You, your guide to product quality and safety. And we're still in the studio talking to engineer Richard Adewumi. Engineer Richard Adewumi is director of marketing of the Standard Organization of Nigeria. Engineer Richard, let's talk about the laboratory in the agency. What is the testing capacity? How were we able to move from a no lab to 42 laboratories in Lagos? We have the NMI in Enugu. We have the Testal in Kaduna and other mini labs. How were we able to achieve that, you know, over the years? Thank you very much. That's why I had to appreciate all our previous chief executives. It takes a lot of determination to do that. Uh, I'm happy you are talking about our laboratories. Uh, in Lagos alone, in Ogba, uh, Ogba complex, we have over 42 laboratories there, and it's still growing. Mm -hmm. Because each time we identify need for a laboratory, the, the provision is made, and then the laboratory is set up. And so a lot of money has been sunk into this. What are we trying to do? We want to increase the testing capacity. Because previously, I used to know sometimes we send samples out of this country for tests. But now, we don't do that anymore. And interestingly, uh, most of this lab also has been accredited. And uh, what it means is that any result generated by that laboratory is recognized worldwide. Oh. So, so today, even for export, that laboratory is very, very important. So we're doing everything to meet the need of not just the manufacturer, including exporters, and also to be able to determine some critical cases when they come up. We do carry out tests for the Nigerian police and other government agency at a particular time. You also have this uh, uh, metrology institute that yeah. is set up, Jagati structure in Enugu. A lot have been sunk into it. That laboratory will serve as a reference lab for anyone engaged in calibration in Nigeria. And so that laboratory is not just going to be a calibration center, it's going to be an in metrology institute where a secondary standard are also calibrated. So it's going to be a big laboratory and it's already, currently we have test uh, calibration capacity for pressure, for temperature, and also for mass. 
We're also able to calibrate some electrical appliance. Today, we're getting big contracts to help some organization to calibrate way bridges all over the country. Now, it's been calibrated uh, by the Standards Organization of Nigeria, uh, the, the Metrology Institute. And so a lot is being done in that institute, and they have a lot of capacity. Uh, we are meeting this need. Pr previously, people bring in foreigners to come and calibrate in Nigeria. But now we have the capacity uh, to, to do that. In the Kaduna, we have, because there are a lot of textile companies there, we took uh, the textile laboratory there. You need to go there and see the type of sophisticated equipment. There is no text on any uh, textile materials that we're not able to carry out in that laboratory. And currently, we are setting up laboratory. The target is to have laboratory at least in all the regions so that we don't have to ship sample from far distance to this laboratory because of the integrity of the product. So we are moving the laboratory closer. And uh, you were at the Ogba the last time you saw yeah. our calibration truck. We have this calibration truck is able to move our calibration equipment to your location where we calibrate your product. You don't have to bring them to us. So we bring those truck to you calibrate your equipment for you because that truck has been designed to meet the requirement for environment to calibrate any equipment. You have said over the years we have acquired a lot of equipment. I want to ask you, engineer, do we have enough manpower to handle these equipment? Yes, we do. Uh, people have been trained daily. People have been sent overseas also to be trained on how to handle those equipment. Every equipment procured, the contract sign is not just for procurement, for installation, and for training, because you don't want to have an equipment that will be idle. So every equipment procured, we already train people that will handle those uh, equipment. OK, is indeed SON's Big 50. I would want you to take us through the activities that have been marked for the Golden Jubilee celebration. We are planning to interact with the stakeholders a lot during this uh, uh, celebration. We are planning also to have an uh, exhibition where we exhibit certified made in Nigeria product wow. so that you will know and you have a feel of those products that are certified. Because we often heard people say, what is SON doing? There are companies that are not all be able to attain that certification. But when you come around, we want to showcase those that we have certified and you will be able to check whether they have the quality built in their product. And so we're also going to be doing that. Uh, we're, like, we're going to be doing a road show. We're, like, we're going to have a town hall meeting where we interact uh, with stakeholders. We want to get feedback from them. This is indeed a big one. And these are some of the activity we're going to do. We'll still come back to your studio to tell more. <laughs> I, all right, we'll be waiting. I hope this will not be in Lagos alone. No, 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 no. We are all over the Federation, and so it's important that everybody celebrate our Golden Jubilee with us. We are reaching out to a manufacturer. They are our friends, they are our partner. We have worked with them over the years. Now that we are 50, we also want them to join us in celebrating our Golden Jubilee. It doesn't look like there's anything for consumers here, and that's bringing they, me to this question. I know you have programs lined up for stakeholders. How about consumers? Are we left out? In all the 36 states that we have covered, including those that have more than one state office within a state, mm -hmm. you observe that we have regular sensitization, consumer awareness, where we bring uh, stakeholders to create awareness for them on what we are doing and what is expected of them. We even got to the extent that now we are now organizing a national quiz for school children so that we want to inculcate the culture of standard in them as young as they are. And so when they grow up, they will also be able to influence their parents. If you take your child now to the supermarket, it tells you, mommy, check the expiry date, check this, check that. And so the children are great influencers. So we also want to create that awareness in there. And then for, for this occasion, I was talking to you uh, about interacting with stakeholder, and then we we'll bring everybody together from different sector, and then they'll be able to interact with our DG. 
We want to get feedback to them. What are their concerns? What are the areas they want us to pay attention to? In that town hall meeting, we'll be able to do that. So what should Nigerians expect from the SON going forward? Well, I think I would like to use this medium to appreciate a lot of people that have supported SON in achieving our mandate. We want to start thank the, the government, the president, the National Assembly, who oftentimes, when we make a request, they oblige us and they have helped us to review our act severally so that we can also meet the requirement of the, our stakeholders. I want to thank the security forces. You know, conducting enforcement in Nigeria is not easy, and they are always there for us at all times. I want to thank the media. Yes, without the media, we we'll remain that organization that is working and nobody knows about. They've been of tremendous assistance to us. Even when we don't pay them, they still cover our event, they still air it. We appreciate them for that support. And I want to thank Nigeria. Uh, if you think we have not served you enough, we will continue to do more. We know we are working towards perfection. And with your help, with your support, we'll be able to deliver better service to you. And thank you in the years ahead. I assure you it's going to be glorious. You will enjoy the Standards Organization of Nigeria more. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay, Engineer Richard Adeumi, I'd like to thank you for the insights you have provided and thank you for coming to us today. Congratulations again to the Director General, Management and Staff of the Standards Organization of Nigeria. You're watching Standard and you, feedback is next on our line up. Safety is a state of being safe. That is the condition of being protected from harm or other non-desirable outcome. Product safety is one of the things many of us take for granted until it's too late. Have you ever thought about the havoc that a substandard cement can cause? It could result in building collapse leading to loss of lives and property. What about the fairly used tire on your car, which has been reported as one of the major causes of road accidents? Did you know that substandard electrical cable could lead to a fire outbreak? Even consumables such as food, drinks and cosmetic products must be of good quality, else it becomes a threat to your health. Quality and safety go hand in hand. This is why most substandard goods are dangerous and unsafe for use. As an agency saddled with the responsibility of protecting Nigerians from fake and substandard products, Standards Organization of Nigeria will stop at nothing in sanitizing our markets and ensuring consumers get value for their money. However, we must realize that we all have a role to play to protect our lives and those of our loved ones from fake products. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the week. Why you dey buy ye yeah, fake product to yeah. ye? Make you dey careful, no go damage your life. You've got one life to live. Buy original.